Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I'm going to talk about this set, Homelands, and I'm going to open this booster pack. Look at that. There are more booster packs behind, it seems. There's one here as well. So at least three of those. I'm going to keep one. I'm going to keep one closed because I want to add it to my Homelands collection. And I actually went through my Homelands collection. And guess what? I'm missing quite a lot of cards. I don't have a didgeridoo. I don't have a leeches, for example, which are two cards that are uh, interesting in Homelands, but also they have some value, especially Didgeridoo. I also discovered that Cuscan Falls is um, a useful card. I knew that, but it's also uh, quite valuable, I believe. If you get a near mint pack fresh Cuscan Falls, you're talking about like about 10 euros. So that's pretty neat. And also there's a common in the set that's about a euro and that is Merchant Scroll. So again, it's about a dollar, dollar and a half pack fresh. And it is a common, so I'm looking forward to try to uh, pull some of these. Okay, so before I open this up, I just first want to pay some attention to the letter because this was actually sent to me by a patron and a very uh, generous patron because he sent it to me for free. Um, it's Keith from the States, so let's, uh, let's have a read, shall we, Thomas? Thank you for creating this community for all of us to enjoy. I know you will find a use for these Homeland cards. Sorry if the packs are not in the best shape. That's okay. I mean, it's just great you're sending these for free. Looking forward to the rest of the Timmy Talks content. Cheers, Keith. Thank you, man. So Keith is a patron, so he's part of the, uh, the Timmy Talks Discord and stuff. If you think, hey, that's something I want to join as well, have a look on the Timmy Talks Patreon page. It's only a dollar a month, so it's not a lot. And um, yeah, it's just a lot of fun. Um, and here is what he sent to me. And this actually all started because he posted on the Timmy Talks um, Discord that he found a few uh, boosters at his LGS. And I said, could you buy a few for me and send them over? And he was just super generous. He was like, man, I'm just gonna send them to you for free. I don't want your money. Um, it's just great what you do, you know, on, on, on YouTube. Ooh, let's be careful, and I want to ruin the pack. There we go. And it's just, it's just amazing to see, like, the, just how generous the community is in old school. It's, um, it's really amazing. It's one of the reasons that my channel is the way it is today, because of all the positive comments. I started this in 2019, and because of all the positivity, I just kept going and going. So look at that, so we've got one Homelands booster, two Homelands boosters, they're so light, because there's only eight cards in these, and there are two uncommons in here. So two uncommons and six commons, no rares, but the uncommon ones are considered to be rare, because they're they're so rare on the, on the print sheet. And this set actually was released after Ice Age. Oh, look at this, and we've got a card here as well. So we got a mystery card. I'm gonna keep that here. Um, and this set was designed by two guys from customer service. Their names were Kyle and Scott, so can you believe that? And and how that whole thing happened is at the time they were still working on, I believe, Fallen Empires and Ice Age. So all the developers were busy with working on their own sets. And the CEO of Wizards at the time, Peter Atkinson was like, oh man, we need more sets, magic is booming. So he asked, the employees of Wizards, can you pitch your set idea? And I'm just gonna choose the best idea and, and we're just gonna make that set. So it's like a dream come true, right? You're you're working at, at WotC, you love magic because you're working there obviously, and you have an idea, but yeah, you're, you're no game developer, so it's probably not gonna happen. And then all of a sudden, you can pitch your idea to the CEO of Wizards. And that happened to uh, Kyle and Scott, and they got actually chosen. I believe they were working at customer service or something. I mean, it's just, it's such a ridiculous story, but it is true. Anyway, uh, they made a top-down design, meaning flavor and story came first, the rest came second. And yeah, you kind of see that through the set, which is, yeah, it's it's uh, it's an interesting set. One of my favorite cards in the set, by the way, is um, Joven Ferrets. That's this one. And the reason it's one of my favorites is because one of the people on the design team actually had ferrets. And that's why this idea for this uh, card game came to be. And the second reason I like it is it's actually quite good. 
It's one green for a one one. And let's just read it, show you what it does. If declared as an attacker, Joven ferrets get plus O plus two until end of turn. At end of combat, tap any creatures that blocked Joe's, uh, Joven's ferrets. These creatures do not untap during their controller's next untap phase. Right? So if you can pump this somehow and just start attacking with it, it's just gonna be really difficult for your opponent to basically stop them. So, and it's just one green, so they would work great in like a green stompy strategy. So this is my two cents. I just wanted to share this card with you. I know that a lot of people don't know the cards. And another thing I really liked about um, Homelands is they have Enchant Worlds in them. So we already saw the Cuscan Falls, one of the more expensive cards in the set. This is another Enchant World from Blue. And uh, it says, all creatures lose flying an island walk. So this is a card that would go great with, for example, Moat. And basically, creatures cannot uh, attack you anymore. And, you know, it's blue, and blue-white control is a pretty big thing. So there are, in my opinion, my humble opinion, some pretty useful cards in the set. And, of course, there's Baron Sengir. It would be super cool to just draw, uh, sorry, pull a mint pack fresh Baron Sengir out of these packs. That would just be insane. Even though it doesn't have a lot of value, this is the card that everybody chased for at the time when Homelands came out. And just the fact that it works so well in, in Vampire Tribal, which wasn't really a thing before Homelands. So Homelands actually made some tribes possible. Like there are also some really cool dwarf cards that are kind of weird, but they're also cool. Talking about dwarves, there's actually a card. Um, it's like the Dwarven Timmy. It's, it's like really weird. And I've, I actually have a signed copy somewhere. You know what? I'm just gonna try to dig up my signed copy. Just give me a moment. And I'm back, and look at this. I found it. It's a signed Reveka Wizard Savant, and it's blue, but it's actually a dwarf. And the reason I know, I'm just going to take it out of the uh, sleeve. The reason I know is by checking the flavor text. So let's have a read. It's nice to see a sister dwarf in a position of such power, but why did it have to be one of those seafaring mule hats? Dwarven trader. So it's just, it's so cool. And as I said, it's signed by Susan, the artist. And this is hard to come by. You try to get this card, a signed copy of this card. Good luck. And uh, she's running the wizard school in the lore of uh, Homelands, which is another thing I like about uh, the set Homelands is that these three color lands were, were introduced, which is pretty unique. Okay, so I'm just gonna put this here. Super happy I own these cards. Um, and I'm gonna open up the first booster pack. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Ooh, I don't wanna ruin the pack. I'm gonna try to keep it in tip top shape. If possible. I'm saying if possible, because it may not be possible. Okay, here we go. Oh, I have ruined it a little. Okay, this is good. So, here we go. Here are the cards. I mean, it's, it's in pretty okay shape. Here are the cards. These two, I think, are the uncommons. So, I'm just going to put them here. We're going to open them up in a minute. I'm going to put them here. And I'm just going to start with these. So we have, we've got Deaf Speakers, which is actually quite a little handy card. It's a um, 1-1 one, one for one white and it has protection from black. We've got Sea Troll, one blue and two, and for one blue you can regenerate it. Use this ability only during a turn in which Sea Troll blocked a blue creature or a blue creature blocked by Sea Troll. And it is a 2-1. Kind of, you know, you could play it in the sideboard, I guess. And this one, Dry Spell. One black and one for sorcery, and Dry Spell deals one damage to each creature and player. And we have Anaba Bodyguard, a summon bodyguard. I think it's now a Minotaur. It's got first strike, a 2-3 first striker. And we have Feast of the Unicorn. Check that art out. An enchant creature that gives plus four, plus O. Oh. Pretty steep casting cost though, four mana to cast. 
And there's an artifact, Clockwork Swarm, for four mana. It's an O3 creature that reads, cannot be blocked by walls. When Clockwork Swarm comes into play, put four plus one plus O counters on it. At the end of combat in which Clockwork Swarm attacked or blocked, remove one of these counters. X and tap, put X plus one plus O counters on Clockwork Swarm. You may have no more than four of these counters on Clockwork Swarm. Use this ability only during your upkeep. Okay, so it's, I guess, a 4-3 for four, 4 when you look at it positively that cannot be blocked by walls, right? But every time you attack, a counter goes off or when it blocks, kind of like the uh, uh, the clockwork creatures in uh, that went before this card, like in Antiquities and uh, also the core set. The clockwork beast, of course, I'm talking about. Um, okay, so here are the rares. Or are we going to get a didgeridoo or a Sengir Vampire? Boom! First card. Abbey Matron. Okay, I think, because this is a common. I wonder, maybe the Clockwork Swarm was the rare. and Or the uncommon, I should say. And boom! We've got, oh, the Anaba Shaman. That is so sweet. This is like the Timmy of, um, the Timmy of Homelands, right? But then the red version. One red and three for two to summon Minotaur. And you can pay a red and tap it, and it deals one damage to target creature or player. Okay, okay, okay. So, I wonder what the actual uncommons are, but I'm going to find out and I'll add it to the video so you guys know. So, these are the cards. Then we have three more boosters. I'm going to keep... Oh, wait, I'm not showing you it on camera. Sorry, guys. I'm going to keep one of these for my collection. I think I'm going to keep this one in my collection. So I'm just going to put that here. Um, but these two I'm going to open up as well. So I'm going to start with this one. Let's see. I think I'm just going to use the scissors. I think that's probably best. And we're going to open it up. And I think as first I thought these two are the uncommons but maybe these two are the uncommons instead so i'm going to put them here remember each booster pack has eight cards two uncommons and six commons let's change it around oh yeah the mess of falcon you also have a falconer i think in the set that gives all the falcons plus one plus one or something and that's actually changed i believe to birds so you can kind of make a bird strategy uh, with homelands anyway mess of falcon one white and one for a one one with flying that you can boost the toughness Kind of like Granite Gargoyle. Oh, yeah, this is a cool card. Hungry Mist. I love the art of this one. So cool. So it's a 6-2, which I always liked, right? As a kid, you love big creatures. Uh, summon Mist, and during your upkeep, pay 2 green or bury the Mist. If you can find a way to give this unblockable, it's just great value. 6 power for 4 mana. That is really, really good. Ooh, Merchant Scroll. So this is one of the more valuable cards in Homelands, definitely the most valuable card in the common slot. So this we're looking at, I mean, unfortunately the card's a little bit bent, but I'm sure this is still like two bucks or something. It's quite nice. And it's a really good card. One blue and one for sorcery. Search your library for a blue instant or interrupt. Reveal that card to all players and put it into your hand. Reshuffle your library afterwards. I mean, it's pretty good. You can look up a counter spell with these, or even better, in old school, you can look up Ancestral Recall. So this is an Ancestral Recall tutor. That's just insane. But obviously, Homelands is, is a set that's not played in uh, in the old school formats, but still, the idea would be super broken. Um, there we go, an artifact, Serrated Arrows, one of the more playable cards in the set, four to cast for an artifact. When Serrated Arrows comes into play, put three arrowhead counters on it. During your upkeep, bury serrated arrows if there are no arrowhead counters on it. Remove an arrowhead counter from serrated arrows to put minus one, minus one on target creature. This is actually pretty decent removal. And at the time when you had to play with homelands at the tournaments, I believe you had to have four or five cards of every expansion set or something. Anyway, uh, this was one of the cards that just saw a lot of play. And the next one, Giant Albatross, sweet. So funny, such a big Albatross and it's just a one one. So one blue and one for a one one flyer. When you pay one blue and one, bury all creatures that damaged Giant Albatross this turn. So that sounds really good, right? But then they added all this stuff to there that makes it just worse. Why did they do that? 
It reads, the controller of any of those creatures may pay two life to prevent that creature from being buried. Effects that prevent or redirect damage cannot be used to counter this loss of life. Use this ability only when the giant albatross is put into the graveyard from play. I mean, why not just keep it to bury all creatures that damage your giant albatross this turn? That would make it at least somehow playable. Anyway, cool art, cool story as well behind this. And we've got the Abbey Matron. So we already had the other art of Abbey Matron. Because there are different types of art in the set, just like you saw with, uh, for example, Fallen Empires. And I believe after Homelands, they stopped doing that. They decided that cards need to be recognizable. So they're not going to have different types of art anymore. But here you can still see that. So the same creature. So one three creature for three mana. And you can tap it and it um, can give plus O oh, plus three until end of turn. So you can make it bigger. Yeah, which is nice, I guess. So it's kind of like a wall. So, and then we have our two uncommons. Dun -dun -dun -dun. Let's see. And we have Giant Oyster. Ooh, I like the flavor of this card. And again, a lot of text, but what it does, right? Your opponent attacks, then uh, you can tap it. Target tap creature does not untap during its controller's untap phase as long as Giant Oyster remains tapped. During your upkeep, put a minus one, minus one counter on that creature. Now, this is a bit of a problem that I have with this card because I actually played this in a tournament where I was allowed to play with Homelands. And uh, this last line, ah, it's so annoying. If Giant Oyster becomes untapped or leaves play, remove all the counters from the creature. So all the counters are instantly removed. If it would just be permanent, right? Okay, I get it, but flavor-wise, if you're stuck in a Giant Oyster and you manage to, es to escape, you still have that damage on you, right? It's still like you're hurt. It's not healthy to stay in a Giant Oyster for that long. So I think, again, it's one of those cards where I think just by taking away this last sentence, it would have been a lot more playable. Um, okay, we're gonna put it here. The last one. Is it gonna be a didgeridoo? Bam! Oh, Cuscan Falls! Wow! So this is at least 10 euros. Booster pack, fresh Cuscan Falls. One of the better cards, one of the most sought after cards in Homelands. Two black and two to cast Enchant World that reads, during your upkeep, tap target, untap creature you control or bury the falls. No creature can attack you unless its controller pays an additional two whenever that creature attacks. This is just a really, really good card. Super happy to have found this out of the pack. Super, super happy. Okay, so we have this. Still a pretty good booster wrapper. I like it. I'm gonna put them here. And then we have the last booster that I'm gonna open up. Uh, before I do this, just a big shout out and a big thank you again to Keith, man. It's so cool you just send this over all the way from the States here to Amsterdam. Really, really appreciate it. And um, maybe it's nice to first have a look what it says here on the pack. Hidden away by a mysterious wizard for generations, the forgotten world of homelands awaits discovery. Revealed within are many peoples, cultures, and creatures in a realm of complex allegiances and sinister plots. What secrets will you uncover as you venture into homelands? So it actually took place on a new plane, so not on Dominaria, but this was the plane of Algrotha. And um, there's a really cool uh, promotion video with this, where actually Timmy plays a super big role because he takes you into Algrotha and shows you the realm. It's, uh, it's super cool. I'm actually gonna, I'll put a link in the description below that if you wanna see that, I mean, check it out, it's just so funny. I also like to see these, um, the colors here, the, the mana symbols on the booster pack. Very cool. Okay, I'm gonna open it up. The last one. I'm gonna really try to enjoy it. And let's see. I wanna make sure that I don't damage the front. Is that possible actually? I think it is, here we go. So, uh, the, these two cards are we discovered the uncommons, right? I'm going to put them here. Let me just put these here. I'm going to put them here. The Cuscan Falls, that's definitely a great hit. And also, let me have a look. Where's the other card? The Merchant Scroll is a great. These are two great hits. 
Obviously, you don't open home lens packs for, for money. You open them just to get a sweet little throwback to, you know, back in the day. And I remember playing with a lot of home lens because I used to get these cards for free. Yeah, this is a cool card. There are just so many interesting cards in home lens. They're not good, but the idea behind them I really like. So this is Dark Maze, one blue and four. You can pay zero, it's a summon wall. So wall means it cannot attack, right? But if you pay zero, Dark Maze can attack this turn. At the end of turn, remove Dark Maze from the game. Dark Maze cannot attack the turn it comes under your control. So what I like about this is you can kind of think, okay, maybe I can find some bounce effect that I can bounce it back to my hand, saving it that way. Or maybe you can use it in like an alpha strike where you just attack with everything, or you can attack with it just before you play out a board wipe, like Wrath of God or something, So or a balance. So it's it's I like these kind of cards. And I think it's really cool that they give you the option to attack. You don't have to, but you've got the option, which is great. It's a four or five body. So, I mean, four power, it's a pretty big deal. And then we've got, oh, Torture. This is so, the art on this card, it's so cool. Who made it, the art? Mark Ted, and yeah. Such a talented artist. So one black for an enchant creature, choose target creature, one black and one, put it minus one, minus one counter on the creature, Torture Enchants. This, I, I think, is actually really useful in, in a lot of those modern decks where you can move minus one, minus one counters around and you have, I think it's called Proliferate, we can double them or something. So I, let me know in the comments below because I only play old school, but I can imagine if you play the newer sets, um, this is actually a useful card. Let me know. And I love the fact here, this looks like, um, oh, what's that card again? You can sacrifice a creature for two mana. It's from the Antiquities expansion. Anyway, you know what I mean, right? I'll, I'll show it here. But um, look at it. That's the same bench, isn't it? That is pretty cool. And then we have, ooh, Willow Fairy. I love the fact that the fairies really came back in this set. That art is just, it's stunning. You don't see art like this anymore. This is fan fantastic. Susan Van Camp flying. One green, one for one, two. You can actually make a fairy tribal deck in Homelands. There's also kind of a fairy, there's some fairy masters or something in the set as well. Maybe Maybe we'll find it in this booster. Another bodyguard, this is our second bodyguard. And, oh, Folk of Anhava, summon Folk of Anhava. If assigned as a blocker, Folk of Anhava gets plus two, plus O oh, until end of turn. They play a big part in the storyline. And Sengir bats, yeah, these are bats and they're not vampires, which in a way I understand, but I feel like shouldn't they be also a vampire that at least, you know, the, the Baron Sengir can regenerate his own bats. Maybe it should have said regenerate target vampire or bat, I think. But yeah. Again, very cool art. So two black and one, pretty steep for a one, two flyer. It does have some ability that you're never going to use, but still cool. Whenever a creature is put into the graveyard, the same turn, Sengir bats damaged it, put a plus one, plus one counter on the bats. So, I mean, that's kind of funny. If you can find a way to use your Sengir to, to kill creatures, I don't know. There's probably some weird combo where you can make it work. Let me know in the comments below if you can make Sengir bats work. I want to see counters on the bats. Um, anyway, okay, so the last two cards. No, 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 Here we go. Boom. A forget. Oh, this is actually an interesting card. Two blue, love the art, like a wizard. It's like, what was I doing again? Sorcery, um, it reads, target player chooses and discard two cards from his or her hand. If the player does not have enough cards in hand, his or her entire hand is discarded. The player then draws as many car cards as he or she discarded this way. Again, probably a useful card in those graveyard strategies where you want to fill your, your graveyard up as fast as you can. And the last one, is it going to be a didgeridoo? Bam! It is not. Oh, but this is an interesting card. Ghost Hound. One black and one summon hounds. Again, uh, uh, from Homelands, of course. A 1-1. One, one. The cool thing here is that it says attacking does not cause ghost hounds to tap. This is the first black creature, I think, at that time that has vigilance. I don't believe there was any creature. And I think vigilant it just isn't a black ability. And in the set, there are more cards like this that have an ability 
that don't really go with the color, <laughs> which again is why some people say it's the worst design set in terms of card mechanics. But I, I think it's kind of cool. I like it. Anyway, uh, what else does it do? So it's a 1-1 one, one with, one, one with Vigilance, and it reads, if assigned to block any white creatures or any white creatures are assigned to block it, Ghost Hounds gains, gains first strike. I guess you could use this in a strategy with a lot of uh, bad moons, you know, pump it up, play or maybe play Unholy Strength on it against a white deck. It's definitely good. And it's always good to have Vigilance because you can attack and use it as a blocker at the same time. Kind of like in the art. I think it's cool. Really nice by Jeff. Jeff A. Mangus. He also made the card for Tracker, by the way, which is one of my favorite cards in green. Um, okay, so this is it. This is the episode for today. Um, please. Oh, wait, 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 wait. It's not the episode. No, 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 no. I'm forgetting something again. Um, sorry, sorry, sorry. Because Keith uh, also sent me a card. So let's let's turn it around. Wait, let's just first get the tape off. And again, Keith, thank you so much for sending this over. It's just a lot of fun to open up Homelands Boosters again. It, it just takes me back to when I started playing Magic. Oh, we got two cards even. I think I saw one. Let's see if we can figure out. Douglas Schuler, it's a 1-1. One, one. Is this a Timmy? Are you sending me a Tim, you crazy man? Let's have a look. It is a Tim. Wow. It's a beta Tim. That is just insane that you're sending me a beta Tim. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. We all know what it does. Beautiful card. Thank you so much, Keith. This is going to go in my special binder. I've got a special binder with the Timmies that I got. And to be honest, which is kind of silly, there's I only bought a Timmy once. And I actually gave that one away. So all the other Timmies I have, I actually got. Um, and here we have the other card. Is it also going to be a Tim? Bam! Oh, Wall of Air. That's beautiful. This is actually going to go in my Blue Flyers, Beta Blue Flyers deck. Wow. Thank you so much keith this is super generous i didn't expect to find these two cards amazing love them um you know what maybe i'm just gonna play with them and i'm not gonna put them in my binder especially the wall of air i'm gonna play definitely and um yeah fantastic amazing thank you so much keith and also thank you for watching another video right here on timmy talks the channel where we talk old school magic and uh yeah please let me know what is your favorite card of Homelands. I would love to hear from you and um, see you next time.